What's up everybody, I'm John. I'm Isaac. And today on Cars and Cameras, we should be able to take our four-wheel drive Ford Bronco go-kart out for a proper rip. So in the last episode, we built a fuel tank, we built a floor, and we're really just on to finishing touches now. So we still need to finish up our fueling system. We need to mount a pulse pump, which is gonna send fuel from our tank into our carburetor. We need to add a fuel filler and vent to our fuel tank seat. And the biggest hurdle is gonna be controls so gas and brake which we're thinking of doing mounting to the steering wheel because there's just no room in the floor of this thing so we're still waiting on a shorter gear for our final drive but it's good enough to where we should be able to go out set a decent lap time and maybe get some air time as well all right so let's get to it we're going to start by welding up our floor and mounting a pulse pump he's talking about like taking it on the Grand Prix or something. Yeah. Y'all don't realize how muddy and cold it is outside. It's bad. You are going to make that lap, my friend, because... Well, kiss it goodbye. Because there's about a 50% chance it's going to get wrecked. So we're about to mount the pulse pump right here on the dash. We think that this is probably the best location because it's kind of a central location between the gas tank and the engine, you know, height-wise and stuff. So. Um, I don't I don't know exactly how to hook this thing up. I'm just guessing so uh, If I say it wrong then my apologies, but I'm gonna hook up this Line here. It's got the P. I'm assuming the P is for pulse We're gonna try the crankcase right here I'm a little unsure if we're gonna have enough pulse there because it is sharing uh, 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 With the lower crankcase and the uh, valve cover which should help equal out, but I'm, I'm hoping that the pulse will be there. And one of these is going to be an inlet and an outlet. I'm not sure which. What we're going to do is we're going to put a, a fuel tank to one side and see if it'll push or pull. So let's get to welding it right about there. What do you think? Looks great. All right. Damn it. Alright, gotta take that loose before the plastic gets too, uh, too hot, 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 hot. Alright, cool. We good? Got it in time, buddy. Good. You need to finish welding that up finish and... Finish welding that thing up and... Mount it. Yeah, boy! Let it cool, mount it, and you pointed out that we need to kind of do some more welding up on the pan oh. hard bar and some other pieces. And the dash. Yes, the dashboard. So we've checked over the chassis, we've done a lot of welding, I'm working on uh, installing our throttle cable holder, our pulse pump is all plumbed up, it's all looking really good. So the next challenge is installing a fuel neck. So we went to our local hardware store and got some galvanized threaded pipe. Which we're going to grind the galvanized off. Yeah, before, before we welding. do any welding, right, but we're basically going to drill a circular hole in our fuel tank, um, either mount it something like that or like that, so it'll poke out right here. We're gonna drill a nice hole in our body. It'll help hold the body on and should be a pretty sweet, semi-factory looking fuel filler. did one pass around our filler neck and feeling confident today. So I'm going to screw the rest of our filler neck on and do the trick that we did last time 
with the soapy water. So I'm gonna wet around the area we're looking for leaks and pressurize. Hold it. You see anything? No, nah, you just don't want to over pressurize it. Yeah, it's still coming out. So can you uh, take I'm a look? I'm looking. Sweet. That's good, that's good. I think it's looking pretty good. Sweet. Yeah. One and done. Not a bad job, bud. And if there are any leaks, it's all the way at the top. So the leaks are going to be minimized. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we should check the bottom, though. Check the, uh, the bung. Yes. Looks pretty good. So I hope that I am right on this. Oh, yeah, dude. It's all right. Sending it. You <laughs> I think we need a bigger hole. Huh? I think we need a bigger hole. There it is. Uh, our biggest problem is we're going to be trying to fill it up and it's going to be we're trying to pour Yeah, that's out. what I was about to say. It's... So we're going to need a one of those funnels with the long tube. We just parked on a hill. We could tilt her up to fill her up. Just tilt her up. So, man, uh, I think we're ready to put fuel in it. Yeah, let's see what how it goes. A little too fast? A little fast. All right, guys, don't make fun of the gas cap. Originally, I wanted the gas cap to uh, screw in the side, which which we can, but it makes it a real pain to fill it up with gasoline. So I had this extra 90, so uh, we threw that up there. So it'll be fine, right? Um, check out the articulation, guys. I was about to say, it looks awesome. It, it is awesome. I mean... What's that? That's it. All four tires are touching something. It's funny, the back articulates more than the front. Yeah. <laughs> so our fuel filter has fuel in it. Uh, we should have fuel in the carburetor already, so I can pull this thing over and I'll see if the pulse pump is hooked up the right way. Yep. And if it is, then our fuel system will be complete. <laughs> Alright guys, a little bit of advice here. This pulse pump, this line, goes to a pulse, which we're using the crankcase in this example. Uh, this line right here, it is not labeled, I don't see anything, but it goes straight to the fuel tank. And this line that's all by its lonesome goes from the pulse pump all the way to the carburetor. Sounds good. So I'm, I'm sure different pumps vary uh, with manufacturers but yep. this is the way this one works yep the go power sports pulse pump that's how it works all right man so uh throttle and brake linkage throttle and brake linkage and Think you can go out and get muddy and then it's time to wreck it 
Now that our fuel system is completely finished up, the two last things we need to do before we can go for a ride are uh, hook up the throttle and the brake pedals or hand controls. We're not, still not sure how we're gonna hook them up, but that's all we have left, and then we can take it for a real rip. So I have a couple paddles drawn out. I'm gonna cut them out now. Huh, it looks good. So last night we spent all kinds of time building this fancy paddle system for our throttle and brake and then we got it mocked up and we realized that there's really no good way to connect the cables to the paddle system. So here's what we have. Basically we have two brake levers from bicycles. One of them is brake, the other one is throttle. So we can steer without it doing anything weird with our cable system. So we still have some cosmetic things to do. We need to switch to that shorter gear, but it's not here yet. But I think it's ready for a test drive now that we have hand controls. So if everything goes well, and it's not a complete swamp back there, we might be able to get a time up on the board. Whoo! So, I don't know. Anyway, can you fire me up? work on that carburetor. What's that? Got to work on that carburetor. The carburetor. Do we need to play with it? To make it run better, there's something wrong with it. Won't go wide open. It's really interesting. I put the choke on at one point and the engine was happier at higher RPM. Yeah, there's, there's something. We had that carburetor on the shelf. I'm thinking for a reason. Yeah, let's uh, swap it real quick and, or at least play around with it and see what we can do. I mean, it seems to be a riot as is. Yeah, the gearing is definitely too, too tall. tall. Yeah, you can hear it. It's not, I mean, it's got decent acceleration, but it's it's not what it should be. And yeah. so as soon as we switch, that gear is going to make a heck of a difference. Yeah, it sure is. So, what do you think of it though? How's it, is it twitchy at all or? No, the steering, it's not twitchy when you get to speed, I don't think so, especially, I mean, it's pretty Okay, it was real the twitchy for me. Yeah, we did the alignment and that made all the difference in the world. Good, good. Yeah, I think we could use a padded seat, or at least I could. Uh -huh. I have a pretty bony butt. Um, but yeah, it's uh, really soft. And we just stiffened the springs all the way, didn't we? We, yeah. We did. Did you bottom it out at all? Uh, I don't think so, but it was still, I mean, you know how you have, every driver has a different type of driving style, different way they like their car set up. Yeah. This one is a little bit soft for my taste, but uh -huh. I will learn how to drive it, and uh, it, it does pretty good, man. This for is... how small it is, it's very potent. Yeah, it's not bad at all. It is so small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We cannot stress enough how small this thing is. Here, I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> yeah, look at that, man. You went way past it in the rear. And uh, yeah, that, that little yard cart. And now I gotta say, that is a little yard cart. Yeah. This is probably about average, maybe a little bit below average for a yard cart size. And look how much shorter wheelbase is here on the Bronco. So, I mean, all things considered, I think it's comfortable enough it's pretty powerful. Of course, we need to uh, pull with that carburetor, change the gearing. I don't think we could do a lap right now because it's so wet and it's not going to be a fast lap. No. Nah. Uh, but yeah, dude, let me let me hop back on and I'll try to jump it real quick. We'll see what okay. happens. Okay. You want to try it in some mud? 
Is it muddy down there? Or are you talking about the other jump? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever you think. I think we ought to try to put that thing where a normal cart can't go. All right. Did you bottom it out or? I need a pad. No, dude, my butt lands on the fuel tank. <laughs> it has zero padding. Oh. Dude, you got some mad air on that one. It jumped? Dude, you came up at least 14 inches off the ground. And that was like barely even a jump, dude. I mean, this is still just the warm up. Did you bottom it out? I don't think so, no. It wasn't the, it wasn't the suspension cush that was uncomfortable. It was just straight up butt that was out of the seat crashing down. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That that corner over there, Feeling? it was up on three That's wheels. Cool. See, you're just up here above it all. Yeah. Just a cloud of opulence. Every episode we do, it gets more and more finished, but it's still very rough around the edges. Uh huh. We need padding on yeah. our chair. These corners. Like, oh yeah. Turn into real thigh bruisers when you're jumping. Does it look good though? It looks very impressive, sir. Now that we've proven that the Bronco can jump, I'm gonna go on a warm lap. It's not ready for a hot lap. We need to redo the brakes. Uh, we need to tweak the steering a little bit, but it's time to get a time up on the board, at least a placeholder until we can get a faster lap out of it. And then I might do our off-road course, which should be a complete swamp right now. All right, buddy. We got dude I thought that was terrible all right we got you ready yeah one minute yep 25 seconds hey under 130 yeah. pretty good yeah i heard you slow way down uh this turns out torque converter belts don't like it when they get submerged in water oh they don't yeah that's right so if we're going to be doing a lot of puddles we need some kind of splash guard yeah not a big deal just crossfire pro Right. Zap zap. Not a problem. Easy peasy. Um, yeah, dude, the suspension is great. It yeah. feels so comfortable. Yeah. Again, padding around the seating area is going to make a world of difference. Uh -huh. And making this steering just a little bit easier is going to be night and day. Right. Okay. So let me take this thing to the swamp area. You think it's ready? Sure. Yep, smoking that belt. Smoking it. <laughs> so, I, uh, clean that off. Oh, Ike's already laughing at me. He got the tractor, he knows what's going on. Yep, got it in the mud. Got some water on that belt going through the creek crossing and that was pretty much it. So again, a water guard, splash guard, and that shorter gearing that we're waiting on is going to make a world of difference. Man, you didn't even give me a chance to come over here. 
no, I was so confident, dude. I was like, I'm gonna get a practice run in so I can get a good looking shot for the camera. So, so how did it do to this point? Fine. I, it got water on the belt on the river crossing. Uh huh. And then it kind of smoked on the way up that uphill. Yeah. And then it got to this point just fine, and then it just stopped. Yeah, the gearing is way off. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, that belt. Well, I already cooked the belt today. You did. I did. Doing the jump. Yeah. Oh, okay. Remember uh, the brake. Oh, the brake. Accidentally was applied and I just cooked the belt. Not a bad, not a bad place to park though. What here? I mean, it, you know, the weather's nice. Yeah. It's gonna suck to yeah. get out, but. Yes, it is. So a few minutes ago, we mentioned something about the brakes, how they're uh, applying because the suspension's shifting a little bit. Well, in this case, it did it again. So, what you want to do, bud? I think we should move the brakes to the central jack shaft. Uh, I agree. I think we'll just take it off of there and, and uh, yeah. Let Put it on an axle that doesn't pivot. Yeah, yeah. So, and it'll act like a uh, power brake because the jack shaft is actually spinning faster than the rear brake. Oh, that's a good point. So it'll be like power brakes using the center of the jack shaft. You know how the monster truck is. Yep. Boy, that thing will stop on a dime. Exactly. Can you imagine this thing stopping so hard? It actually. Oh, I bet it would. It might. <laughs> if you it might. Because it's four wheel drive. Yeah. And the nice thing is, like, if we lose the chain on the rear or the chain on the front, we'll still have brakes. Like, yeah. the odds that we're going to lose both chains at the same time, I'd say, is extremely low. Yeah. I am going to go hop on the tractor and I'm going to try to get unstuck. And okay. I'm going to go get a tool and I'm going to loosen the brakes. So I can. Uh, so you can try to take off out of here. It. Sounds good to so me. I'll be right back, dude. Because those two rear trailing arms move independently of one another, we figured it would be a problem for the brake. But we figured, what the heck? It'll be fine. Yeah, we'll set it up, and if it's a problem, we'll change it. Well, it's a problem, and now we just need to change it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, change it, but also just you know, while it's stuck in the mud. It looks like it wants to move. Yeah, we, now we knew that the gearing was off. Yeah. But you were a little optimistic. You thought that maybe it could possibly do it. And I'll be, I'll, I'll tell the truth. I thought that it had a chance to. Thanks for tuning into this episode, everybody. Now that we have two major projects ramping down, getting close to completion, let us know in the comments what should, uh, what should we be doing next? We have a couple of good ideas in mind, but it's always good to hear from you guys. Um, if you enjoyed today's episode, leave us a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff, smash the like button, demolish it. Um, if you want to help support our future episodes, go to our website, cars-cameras.com, and buy any of our merchandise. It'll help us expand to bigger and better things. And anytime you use our sponsor, gopowersports.com for go-kart and mini bike parts, let them know that Cars and Cameras sent you. I think it's clean, man. It looks good. Yeah. Thanks for watching again, guys. Check Ike out on Facebook and check Ike out. My feet are about to freeze. Oh, up. that's fine. Check me out at Isaac It'll Be Fine <laughs> on Instagram and YouTube. YouTube. Cars and Cameras reviews on Facebook. John underscore Cars and Cameras on Instagram. Thanks for watching again, guys. We'll catch you next time. Kelby, roll the jump one more time. <laughs>